It's time to provide you the motorsports news in this motorsports update episode as of October 20th, 2020. For this motorsports update episode, I'm just going to show off replays from my Gran Turismo Sport gameplay that I did a while back. I'll put the link in the description below to check out those Gran Turismo Sport gameplay episodes. For this motorsports update, I'll be focusing on the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship, MotoGP, Formula One, the NASCAR Cup Series, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, and IndyCar, with some other motorsports news story points after. The IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Series raced at Road Atlanta on September 5th, for a short endurance race. Short being six hours. All four classes raced in this race. At the end of the six hours, the number seven Acura Team Penske won overall and in the DPI class with drivers Ricky Taylor and Elio Castroneves. PR1 Matheson Motorsports with drivers Simon Trummer, Scott Huffaker, and Patrick Kelly would win a two-car race in the LMP2 class. In the GTLM class, the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan BMW M8 would take the win with drivers Connor D. Filippi and Bruno Splangler. Meyer Shake Racing Acura NSX with drivers Mario Farmarker, Matt McMurray, and Shinya Mishimi took the win in the GTD class. On September 27th, the series raced at the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course, featuring just three classes, the DPI class, the GTLM class, and the GTD class. Acura Team Penske would go back-to-back, -back, winning overall and in the DPI class with drivers Elio Castroneves and Ricky Taylor. Corvette Racing takes the win in the GTLM class with drivers Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor. The AIM Master Sullivan Lexus wins in the GTD class with drivers Aaron Tielitz and Jack Hawksworth. The next event for the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship was on October 10th where they raced alongside the NASCAR series in the same weekend at the Charlotte Roval. The GT classes were the only classes to race here. It was a very rainy and wet race. After all of the chaos of a wet race, Corvette Racing's number three car would go back to back and get the overall win and the win in the GTLM class with drivers Antonio Garcia and Jordan Taylor. Turner Motorsports BMW M6 would win in the GTD class with drivers Bill Oberlin and Robbie Foley. Bill Oberlin would continue to increase his all-time win record in the IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. The Petit Le Mans raced on October 17. Normally, the Petit Le Mans marks the last race of the season, but with the adjusted schedules due to the COVID-19 pandemic, it is the third to the last race of the season. The 10 hours of the Petit Le Mans brought some exciting racing and there was a whole lot of drama in the final hour. Pipo Durrani in the number 31 Whelan Engineering Cadillac DPI and Ricky Taylor in the number 7 Acura Team Penske DPI would wreck each other in the closing laps of the race. Ricky Taylor would attempt a pass on Pipo Durrani but would shunt Durrani into the barrier and spin himself out. Not too far behind in the third was the number 10 Wayne Taylor Racing Cadillac DPI, which they would get past the stranded and ailing cars to take the lead and then win in the DPI class in the closing minutes of the race with drivers Ryan Briscoe, Scott Dixon, and Ranger Van Der Zanden. The race would end under caution because of an accident in the final five minutes after a restart. Ryan Briscoe and Ranger Van Der Zanden would extend their points lead in class for the overall championship. In the LMP2 class, Tower Motorsports by Starworks won with drivers John Ferrano, Mikkel Jensen, and Job Van Etert. The Porsche 911 would end 
Corvette's winning streak and win in the GTLM class with drivers Nick Tandy, Fred McAwecki, and Matt Campbell. The Scuderia Corsa number 63 Ferrari 488 would take the win in the GTD class with driver Scooper McNeil, Jeff Westphal, and Alessandro Balzan. The next and penultimate race of the 2020 IMSA WeatherTech Sports Car Championship season is at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca in California on November 1st. After that race would be the postponed 12 hours of Seabree, which they will host the final race of the season on November 14th. The seventh race of the 2020 MotoGP Championship saw them race at the Misano Circuits for the Grand Prix of San Marino on September 13. Franco Morbidelli of the Petronas Yamaha SRT wins the race. In the second race at the Misano Circuit on September 20 for the Delmulia Romagna Grand Prix, Maverick Vinales of the Monster Energy Yamaha Factory Team won the race. Moto2 rider and 2018 Moto3 champion Jorge Martin announced he will be moving up to the premier class of MotoGP for the 2021 season. There is no retirement in his future for Valentino Rossi, as Rossi announced that he will race with the Petronas Yamaha SRT team for the 2021 season. This answers the question of who replaces Fabio Quattararo at the team as Quattararo replaces Rossi at the Yamaha factory team. September 27 was race 9 of the 2020 MotoGP season, which they raced at the Barcelona Circuit of Catalonia. Petronas Yamaha SRT rider Fabio Quattararo takes his third career win and third win of the season. Race 10 on October 11th was at the Le Mans Circuit in France. Ducati team rider Danilo Pertucci takes the win in a wet to dry MotoGP race. The 11th race of the 2020 MotoGP season on October 18 returns to Spain at Motorland Aragon. Before the Aragon event, Valentino Rossi would not race as he tested positive for COVID-19. The race saw pole sitter Fabio Quattararo struggle. The Suzuki factory team would prove to be the best as they take first and third on the podium, with Alex Rins getting his first career MotoGP Premier Class win. Joanne Mir, who finishes third, now leads in the championship point standings with four races left in the 2020 season. The next race for MotoGP is at Aragon again on October 25 for the Grand Prix of Torrio. The 2020 NASCAR Cup playoffs started. The round of 16 sees drivers Kevin Harvick seated first, then Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr., Brian Blaney, Alex Bowman, William Byron, Austin Dillon, Cole Custer, Eric Amarola, Clint Boyer, Kyle Busch, Kurt Busch, and Matt DiBenedetto. The three races in the round of 16 started with a race at Darlington Raceway on September 6. Kevin Harvick would get the win and secure a spot in the round of 12. The next race was at Richmond Raceway. On September 12th, Brad Keselowski won and would secure a spot in the round of 12. The last race of the round of 16 on September 19 brought the thunder at Bristol Motor Speedway. After the storm had settled, Kevin Harvick would get his ninth win of the 2020 NASCAR Cup season in Bristol. Cole Custer, William Byron, Brian Blaney, and Matt DiBenedetto would get eliminated from the playoffs. Kevin Harvick, Denny Hamlin, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr., Alex Bowen, Austin Dillon, Eric Almorola, Kyle Busch, Clint Boyer, and Kurt Busch would advance to the round of 12. 
Some news that broke in between those races. It was announced by Chip Ganassi Racing that Ross Chastain will drive the number 42 car full-time next season for the 2021 NASCAR Cup Series. Earlier, it was announced Bubba Wallace was going to be leaving Richard Petty Racing at the end of the season. The question, where is Bubba Wallace going to go for the 2021 season? Then the announcement came and Bubba Wallace will be driving for Denny Hamlin and six-time NBA champion with the Chicago Bulls, Michael Jordan. Denny Hamlin with Michael Jordan have created a NASCAR Cup team with Bubba Wallace as their driver. The round of 12 in the playoffs started at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway on September 27. Hometown driver Kurt Busch wins and secures a spot in the round of eight. Hendrick Motorsports announced a promotion to Chad Canals' role and will not be a crew chief next season. The NASCAR Cup Series announced their 2021 schedule. Some notable races in the schedule include the All-Star Race, which will be held at Texas Motor Speedway on June 13. They will race on dirt at Bristol Motor Speedway on March 28. They'll have a race at Circuit of the Americas in Austin, Texas on May 23, 2021. The Cup Series will race at the legendary road course at Road America on July 4, 2021. Then on August 15, 2021, they will run the Indianapolis Road Course with the IndyCar Series in the same weekend. Talladega was the next race on October 4 in the round of 12. It is all up in the air with pack racing. In the end, Danny Hamlin would hold off everyone to take the win. With that, Hamlin would secure a spot in the round of eight. Hedrick Motorsports announced that Alex Bowman will replace Jimmy Johnson in the number 48 car for the 2021 season. A new team called Trackhouse announced that they will race in the 2021 season with Daniel Suarez as their driver with Chevrolet. Clint Boyer announced that he will retire full-time from the NASCAR Cup Series. He will become a part of the broadcast crew of hosts for NASCAR on Fox in 2021. The last race of the round of 12 was at the Roval at Charlotte Motor Speedway. With rain over the weekend, this made it for the first time in NASCAR Cup history where a race was raced in wet conditions. Chase Elliott would win the race in the wet. The round of eight started at Kansas Speedway on October 18. With the announcement of Clint Boyer's retirement, there were a lot of tributes to Boyer as he races for the last time in his home track. It was a thrilling end as Joey Logano held off a closely fought Kevin Harvick to win at Kansas Speedway. Joey Logano with this win would secure a spot in the championship four for a chance to win the 2020 NASCAR Cup Series Championship in the final race at Phoenix. The next race in the round of eight is at Texas Motor Speedway on October 25th. Some last news points to have come out is that NASCAR officially reinstates Kyle Larson to return to racing starting in 2021. Stuart Haas Racing announced that Chase Briscoe will be replacing Clint Boyer in the number 14 car for the 2021 season. The legendary endurance race, the 24 Hours of Le Mans, was postponed to September 19 and September 20, 2020 from its original June weekend due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This is the 88th running of this legendary endurance race. The overall win and the LMP1 class win went to the Toyota Gazoo racing team with drivers Sebastian Buemi, Brendan Hartley, and Kazuki Nakajima. United Auto Sports took the LMP2 class win with drivers Felipe Albuquerque, Philippe Hansen, and Paul DeResta. Aston Martin Racing took the win in the LMGTE Pro class with drivers Alex Lynn, Maxime Martin, and Harry Ticknell. Lastly, in the LMGTE AM class, TF Sport takes the win in their Aston Martin with drivers Jonathan Adam, Charlie Eastwood, and Saleh Yulok.
Now let's go over all the Formula One news from the past month and a half. Formula One would race at the Temple of Speed, that is Monza in Italy, on September 6th. Claire Williams of the Williams F1 team would perform her last duties as team principal as they have sold the team to Doralton Capital. This new company will keep racing under the Williams name. It was a wild race where we saw multiple safety car periods due to shunts from the Ferrari drivers because of brake failures. Charles Leclerc's heavy crash brought out a red flag. Hamilton would get a penalty for entering the pit lane when it was closed due to a safety car. After the red flag period, they would restart the race on lap 28 by way of a standing start per red flag procedures. Alpha Tari would win again in Monza like they did in 2008 under the Toro Rosso name. Pierre Gasly would get his first career Formula 1 Grand Prix win in Monza. Sergio Perez announced he will be leaving Racing Point at the end of the season. Sebastian Vettel officially signed a multi-year deal to race with the new Aston Martin team starting next season in 2021. A reminder that Racing Point turns into the Aston Martin F1 team for next season. The next race was at the Mugello circuit on September 13. This is the first time Formula 1 has held a Grand Prix at the Mugello circuit in Italy. For this race, Ferrari would celebrate their 1000th race in Formula 1. During the race, an opening lap incident would cause a safety car period. In a rolling start on lap 6, there would be a huge crash midfield, taking out 5 more drivers. A red flag period would happen mid-race with Lance Stroll suffering a tire failure during a high speed corner, which would send him careering across the gravel and into the tire barrier. Another restart would happen again with a standing start per the procedure after a red flag period. But none of this face Lewis Hamilton as he gets the win in Mugello. On September 27th, the next race after Mugello was in Sochi for the Russian Grand Prix. Before the race, Lewis Hamilton would have to serve a 10 second penalty for his practice start violations. Serving the penalties during the race would hand his teammate Valtteri Bottas the win. Hamilton would end up finishing third. In the break between Grand Prix, Honda would announce that it will leave Formula 1 at the end of the 2021 season. Lance Stroll did not feel well to compete for the upcoming Eiffel GP. Nico Hülkenberg got the call once again from Racing Point to race in place of Lance Stroll this time. Kimi Raikkonen celebrated 323 race starts equaling the record set by Rubens Barrichello. The Eiffel Grand Prix on October 11, 2020 was at the Nürburgring. It was a dominant race by Lewis Hamilton as he would win the Eiffel Grand Prix. Another record was equaled as Lewis Hamilton equaled Michael Schumacher's win record of 91 Formula One Grand Prix wins. And with Hamilton's age and the current state of how well he's doing, he will most definitely surpass the 91 win record. In the driver standings after the Eiffel Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton leads the championship over his teammate by 69 points. And the Mercedes has a substantial lead over Red Bull in the constructor standings. The next race for Formula One is on October 25 this weekend at another new track and that is the Algarve circuit in Portugal for the return of the Portuguese Grand Prix. Now for the IndyCar news. After the races in Gateway, IndyCar announced it will be racing at Mid-Ohio for a doubleheader weekend on September 12th and 13th, 2020. In those races at Mid-Ohio, race one, the Penske's dominated with Will Power getting the win. And then in race two in Mid-Ohio, it was a different story from race one. The Hondas with Andretti Autosport would dominate the day. Colton Herta would hold off his Closely fought teammate Alexander Rossi in the final laps. Herta would earn his third career win in the IndyCar series. Before the double header at the IMS road course, Oliver Askew was declared unfit to race due to symptoms he had 
from his accident back in the Indy 500. Elio Castroneves would replace Oliver Askew and race for the Aero McLaren team. Zach Feech was released from Andretti Autosport. In his place, James Hinchcliffe would take over for the final three races of the season. No official word if Hinchcliffe would race full-time with the team for the 2021 season. Speaking of 2021, the 2021 IndyCar Series schedule has officially been announced. With that, it comes a new street race, a race with the NASCAR Cup Series, and a hopeful return to all the venues that had to cancel their races in 2020. March 7, 2021 kicks off the season in St. Petersburg. I am definitely excited for the return of the Grand Prix of Long Beach on May 18, 2021. Texas Motor Speedway will host a doubleheader on the oval track on May 1st and 2nd, 2021. The 105th running of the Indianapolis 500 will be on Memorial Day weekend, May 30th of 2021. IndyCar announced a new street race and a race in the streets of Nashville, Tennessee was announced. It will be titled the Music City Grand Prix and it will be held on August 8, 2021. Then a second race will be run on the IMS Road Course on August 14, 2021, which they will be racing in the same weekend as the NASCAR Cup Series. The 2021 IndyCar Series season will end on September 19 at WeatherTech Raceway Laguna Seca. The 2021 season has 17 races in total. The next set of races for the IndyCar Series is once again a doubleheader back at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Road Course. Starting on Friday, October 2nd, 2020 and race two being on Saturday, October 3rd. This is titled the Harvest Grand Prix. Race one of the Harvest Grand Prix saw rookie Renus VK get his first career pole position. It was a battle in the beginning between the young drivers VK and Colton Herta. Strategy and tire management was key in this race. Joseph Newgarden would once again prove to be the best as he wins race one of the Harvest Grand Prix. Newgarden's win would close the gap to Scott Dixon in the championship standings. Race two was a hard fought race. Tire management was key once again. Colton Herta would close the gap on Will Power in the closing laps, but it wasn't enough to get past Power. Will Power would get the win in the penultimate race of the season. This race was about championship implications as it was the penultimate race of the season. The fight for the 2020 championship is between Scott Dixon and Joseph Newgarden. Dixon is going for his sixth IndyCar Series championship and Joseph Newgarden is going for his third IndyCar Series championship. Entering race two of the Harvest Grand Prix, Dixon was ahead by 40 points in the championship standings. At the end of the race, Dixon would finish 8th, where Joseph Newgarden would finish 4th in race 2. The championship points sees Scott Dixon still leading with 502 points, but Joseph Newgarden would close the gap to 32 points with his accumulated 470 points. Scott Dixon would need to finish poorly in the final race of the season for New Garden to close the 32 point gap and steal the championship away from him. The final race of the season is on the streets of St. Petersburg, Florida for the Firestone Grand Prix of St. Petersburg this weekend on October 25th, 2020. Race coverage will be on your local NBC affiliate. In other motorsports news, in the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship, Zach Osborne was crowned 2020 champion in the Premier 450 Motocross class. The 2020 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship crowned its champion as Scott McLaughlin was able to clinch the championship with a, still a handful of races to go in the series. This is Scott McLaughlin's third straight championship in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship. Speaking of Scott McLaughlin, McLaughlin is set to make his debut with the IndyCar Series this weekend in St. Petersburg, Florida, driving for Team Penske. And then just this past weekend, the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship 
raced at the legendary Mount Panorama Circuit for the Bathurst 1000. The race was won by the Red Bull Holden Racing Team with drivers Shane Van Gisbergen and Garth Tander.
This concludes this Motorsports Update episode. Please click that like button, subscribe to the Spellgo YouTube channel if you have it for more of my Motorsports Update and Grand Tours Most Park gameplays, as well as all my other content. And as always, thank you for watching.